Hi there and welcome. It's Psychic Cynthia here. Welcome, fellow spiritual psychics and cosmic travelers, seekers of the higher way. Yes, it's Psychic Cynthia here, spiritual psychic Cynthia Killian. And happy new moon in Virgo. Well, almost new moon in Virgo. The new moon will be exact this month on uh, Thursday. I guess that's September 14th. And where I'm at here in the central USA time zone, that's 8.40 p.m. Uh, at 21 degrees Virgo. So uh, happy new moon in Virgo. Happy birthday to all you Virgos as well. Uh, any Virgos having your birthday this month or uh, even last month. Uh, so new moon in Virgo is usually considered a wonderful time uh, to begin a new cycle of organization and getting back to business and getting your household in order, getting, you know, oh, you know, that boring stuff like your paperwork and cleaning out your closet and uh, all of that and, and somewhat fun stuff too. Like I've been uh, updating my fall wardrobe, maybe you have too, uh, kind of organizing it and stuff. But there are spiritual dimensions of Virgo too that often get overlooked. Virgo is very connected to the earthly realm and to the fairy mysteries. And uh, in the northern hemisphere, in, in many places, this is the time of year where the fairy and nature spirits, the land spirits, the elves, whatever terms you want to use, I'm, I'm really talking collectively about the nature and land spirits. Uh, this is the time of year where there is great movement with those spirits and in the north where I live the northern hemisphere we can feel these spirits sort of recentering and regrounding and collecting themselves back into the earth again you know in other words lowering frequencies slowing down and we mirror that in the human world now if you're in the southern hemisphere it's going to probably be the opposite there is still movement in the uh, fairy spirits, the earth spirits, around the time of the new moon in Virgo. Uh, and this all actually lines up too with the equinox that's coming up. And for those of us here in the north, that is the fall equinox. But uh, wherever you live, it's a September equinox. So um, a lot going on with those movements of energies. And if you are more open, or if you're just open to it, <laughs> if you're more psychically sensitive or open, you can take some time to tune in to the spirits. You can do that more easily right now. You can um, feel the vibrations of the fairy realm and the nature and land spirits. Listen to your land wherever you live. Even if it's in the city, you know, there's still, your building still sits on land. So take some time to tune into what your land wants from you. If you have a yard, what does your yard want from you now? If you have inside plants what do they want but uh, even more importantly what does the land want from you right now what is it telling you to do listen to that there's wisdom in that now as a bonus here I did do a, a quick little rune reading before coming on to do this you know message about the new moon in Virgo and by the way this is about a month-long cycle but you'll really feel its energy the most strongly for the next two weeks, you know, between now and the full moon. Uh, but you have about a month, you know, from about September 14th to October 14th or 13th. You, you have, you know, a window of time there to set new goals and, you know, have a new theme, make strides, get some stuff done. Basically, you can get a lot of stuff done. With this new moon in Virgo, it's it's one of the most productive new moon cycles of the entire year. So we don't have to limit it to only one area. Let's just say uh, this is the time to get stuff done. Okay, uh, you ever heard that saying? September is the new January. I get that because we usually have the new moon in Virgo in September. So um, yeah, and plus the sun's still in Virgo. So yeah, it's the time to, to get moving again. You know, after summer, summer is kind of a, a lazy time, a relaxed time, you know, a time of pleasure and celebration and joy. And 
now now it's time to get stuff moving again so whatever area but in addition to the astrology uh, I did want to take some time to tune into guidance for us especially because I see that this new moon is trining Uranus and that can always bring all kinds of wonderful surprises and then some unexpected surprises that well it just brings unexpected surprises and some are welcome and some are not uh, I know those of you who study astrology you might just assume that a trine is always positive but I think when you have Uranus involved, um, Uranus is just bringing forth unexpected events and, you know, oddities. And sometimes they are wonderful surprises and sometimes uh, they're real head scratchers. <laughs> Let's put it that way. What happens is maybe not as welcome or it just seems a little odd or out of whack. I do believe that Uranus, the planetary energies of Uranus are very aligned with the force of what we call in the north weird or what some call fate but it's more than that uh, the threads of weird w y r d okay <laughs> not w e i r d although the words are related uh, sometimes you know something happens and it seems very uh, lined up cosmically like serendipitous or just you know you can tell there's a larger faithful pattern at work so what do we say we say that's weird but we don't really mean it's weird weird in the way we usually think it we mean it's weird it's part of the cycle of fate so uh, i think that this full moon will bring up or excuse me this new moon in virgo will bring up some interesting karmic opportunities uh, some chance encounters that could be life-changing uh, so pay attention Keep your eyes open and your ears turned on. Uh, notice any special invites you get or, you know, interesting people you meet. It, it might be the beginning of a new path for you, for real. Uh, now, I did do a room reading, just a quick room reading, before I logged on about this new moon cycle. So, again, that's approximately September 14th, let's say, to October 13th. I need to look up the date precisely, but that's, that'll get you close. 2023 and interestingly enough the first print I got was to was reversed or the tier when TYR uh, reversed and that can have a lot of different meanings but usually when I get that reversed rune if I'm not asking a yes or no question I will draw another rune because I was just going to draw one rune but I needed more information uh, because the second rune can tell me uh, a little bit about what more about what we need to do. In other words, when Tawaz is reversed, well, when it's upright, okay, when this rune is upright, this is victory, success, especially in legal matters. It's, it's you're heading in the right direction. When it's reversed, it can mean we're not heading in the right direction. And since this is a collective, you know, reading, not just for me, and not just for one person, uh, but for all of us watching and, and maybe some who aren't watching too. We'll hear about it somehow. Um, this can mean that something in the collective, in the society, around the time of this new moon is not moving in the right direction. And since the new moon is in Virgo, this can relate to health matters, to sickness, um, to reform or laws or legislations in that area because Tear is very much a legal related rune. Um, I really don't know exactly, precisely at this moment what it relates to because I just did the reading a few minutes ago and I'm going to have to chew on it, but I'm putting forth some possibilities here. Um, yeah, so something's not quite moving in the right direction during this new moon cycle. And that's good information because if something in society is maybe not moving in the best direction right now, you might want to prepare yourself uh, spiritually by meditating more and also physically by taking good care of yourself and your health. That will just help you to endure whatever is coming ahead. And when Tawaz is reversed, a lot of times it's saying, you know, you have to surrender because it's a run of victory, right? Upright. But when it's reversed, you know, you have to surrender. You know, some people might say it's a, you lose, but it's surrender. So I draw another run to see what is it we're surrendering to. Now, for those of you who read runes, don't freak out, but the next rune I got was Hagalaz. <laughs> you know, the Hailstone rune. Uh, I believe it's number, is it number nine? 
um, yeah, well, it's in the second row. I think it's the start of the second row. Um, yeah, so it's, this is the rune of emergency, of crisis. Uh, but it's also opportunity through crisis. But, you know, I would say Hagalaz very much is like, has a vibrational resonance with the planet of Uranus. You know, it's all this disruption, things, uh, you know, bursting forth that you didn't see coming. And, and often it is an unwelcome energy with Hagalaz initially. But if you open to the transformation, because it's a run of sudden change and disruption. So, you know, maybe this is just going to be on a small level. It might just mean um, as this cycle goes further, you know, as we get further into this next month, September 14th, you know, approximately to October 13th, um, it might mean that, you know, there's going to be some disruptions come up in your plans. And things aren't going to go as you planned. It could mean that. It could just be something small. Uh, but again, this is a collective reading, so it could be larger. It could be that there's going to be some sudden shocks and, and upsets. Uh, I really don't know for sure at this time. I'm going to have to sit with this reading. I might have to, you know, meditate on it some more. Um, but I think that when Hagalas comes up, that, you know, it's a reminder to work on yourself, to strengthen yourself, and to be adaptive. Uh, look at where you're resisting change in life. I mean, here's just a simple example. Is there a technological change you're resisting that you know you need to integrate? Or maybe there's something you need to do to your house. You need to fix it up and you're resisting it. Um, these are very practical, kind of mundane level examples. I think that's a good place to start. Maybe there's change that needs to happen of a higher order. Uh, maybe you are feeling unrest with your job and you need to change some things there. The thing about Hagalaz, listen, there is some empowerment to it if you want to take it. Uh, it's not all about being a victim, although you may feel like you're a victim of Hagalaz. Just don't make yourself a victim. When Hagalaz comes up, it means there, there are some things that need to change and if you don't change them, the universe is going to, you know, bring something into your life that's going to force you to change them. So think about what you know needs fixing, changing in your life, and I don't know what that is because each person is different. And start addressing that now because you're not going to be able to get away from addressing it. That's what this little runic reading is saying, that we have to surrender to change in our lives. We have to surrender to self-improvement and by the way Virgo is the sign of self-improvement and listen I'm all about self-acceptance I, I think that you cannot truly improve until you accept yourself where you're at but it's also true that if we're not evolving we're de-evolving you can't stay in one place okay so you're either learning and growing and evolving or you're de-evolving energy cannot be static um, even to maintain a feeling of being in one place, you have to, you know, keep feeding your energy and expanding. And uh, like a fire, you have to stoke the fire, right? I mean, if you've ever had a fire, you know, you maybe have your little fire pit or you've been camping and, yeah, you've got to use your fire stick, right, to, to get the fire growing and to keep it going. So, yeah, this is saying, you know, look at those areas of life. Accept yourself, yes. Accept where you're at, and then really take a long, hard look at where you know you need to grow. And I think it's going to be obvious, but if it's not, if you're confused, I do recommend getting a reading with a gifted psychic or astrological counselor. Yes, it could be me, uh, or it could be somebody else. Somebody, you know, just as long as it's somebody you trust and who is competent, okay? That's that's what's important. And, and listen, I... I can't recommend readers in every country of the world or every city. You're going to have to find your own, okay, uh, if it's, it's not me. But yeah, having a private reading done might be able to help if you're confused. But that's not all, okay. You actually need to make the changes. And no reader can do that for you, dear ones. Um, so be open. And if you happen to read runes or tarot or whatever it is you do for yourself or just tune into the guides like I like to do, um, yeah, it might be a good time to tune in and ask for guidance, specific guidance to your situation about where 
know, you're needing to make this change so that when the upcoming disruptions come, you'll be more prepared. Alrighty, so a lot to think about in this new moon cycle. And heck, I didn't even cover the fact that we're about ready to have the uh, equinox next week too. That'll be a separate video, a separate update for a separate time. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, yeah, you can follow me here wherever you see this video if you want to get more of these updates. And I also have a cosmic newsletter that you can subscribe to at CynthiaKillian.com. Until next time, I'm sending you much love and many cosmic blessings to assist you on your beautiful journey. Stay cosmic, y'all. Bye.